Every year, with our cars and factories and farms, we emit carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. A lot of it. 36 billion tons every single year. All this dumping has increased the concentration of CO2 to 400 parts per million today. Okay, wait a minute, what does that mean? Well, imagine the atmosphere as this square. Let's make it 1000 pixels on each side, so that there is a total of 1 million pixels. This is how much oxygen there is. This is argon, and this is CO2. It's a teeny tiny square of just 20 pixels on each side. It's so small, it's hard to see when you zoom out. But how can something so small in proportion have such a big effect? It's not difficult to imagine if you look at what a few drops can do to a glass of water. So it's very important to keep CO2 very stable and not mess with the concentration. Unfortunately, we've been messing with it quite a lot. In the pre-industrial age, we had 270 parts per million. Now we are at 400, heading to 600 or more by 2060, unless we take some very drastic measures. And it won't be pretty. So the equation is simple. We should reduce the stuff that we put into the atmosphere and we could use this amazing 370 million year old technology specifically engineered to capture CO2 called trees. The question is, can we plant enough trees to offset 36 gigatons of CO2? My name is Fede and this is Eternally Curious. One tree can suck 20 kilograms of carbon from the air every year, which is about what your average airport luggage should weigh. So 50 trees can suck a whole ton every year. Our goal is to offset 36 billion tons, so that's 1,800 billion trees, which is 1.8 trillion trees. Let me repeat that. It's 1.8 trillion trees with the T. Uh, so okay, so how much is that? If we assume the optimal spacing between trees of about 10 meters, 1.8 trillion trees require 180 million square kilometers of land. Okay, that doesn't help. What the heck does that mean? If we look at planet Earth, the total amount of land area is only 149 million square kilometers, which makes the tree takeover plan physically impossible. See the problem there? The sad reality is that trees alone cannot offset our yearly CO2 emissions. But what if we stopped emitting all this CO2? What if we moved to a new way of living so that by 2060 we have 100% clean energy and sustainable practices? And perhaps this December, the COP21 could be the turning point for this transition. That would be great, but we still have a problem. Even in the most optimistic scenario, it's almost impossible to stabilize at less than 450 parts per million, which would be far better than 600, but it's still pretty bad. So there is still 180 parts too much. Can trees help there? As we saw, one tree can offset 20 kilograms of CO2 per year, but that also means that it can suck one ton in 50 years. One part per million in the atmosphere is equivalent to 7.8 gigatons of carbon, which is a lot. Since we need to offset 180, we need to suck 1.4 trillion tons of carbon dioxide. But we have seen this number before, that's 1.4 trillion trees, and they require 140 million square kilometers of land, which is less than what's available on planet Earth, so we're good. Or not really. By looking at a picture of our planet, you probably notice these things called deserts and other stuff where trees can't grow. So we could use at best 50% of the land area, unless we turn deserts into forest, which is probably more difficult than fixing the climate in the first place. But even then, we'd have no space left for anything else. No cities to live in, no farms to grow food, no cinemas to enjoy movies, no houses to record educational YouTube videos, just uh, a lot of trees. In short, we'd need two planets just to offset past emissions of one planet. So that's impossible, but just because we want to do it in 50 years, our puny little human timescales. If you're the planet, you don't care. You can wait a thousand years. It's all divided by 20 and then it's easy. Trees alone aren't enough to fix our climate problem, but we should still plant them. To really fix the climate for humans, we need something more audacious. And that's what we're going to look at on the next video. If you want to know more about it, you should subscribe to this channel. Like, right now. I'll just wait for you to subscribe, so it's fine. Oh, you're done? Great. Now, you should also follow me on Conos, where I'm exploring the subject of climate change, how to fix it, 
and a lot more cool stuff. If you donate any amount, you'll get exclusive private updates with access to my videos before they go live. And you can choose from many more cool rewards, including digital downloads to all of my stuff, or even seeing your name on screen as a producer to my next video. Thank you for being curious.